Good afternoon, everyone. Um, good afternoon, Professor. Good afternoon. Uh, I have a question about some uh, yeah. organizational moments. Uh, as I have seen in the attendance application, we are going to have the last class on the December 8th. Am I right? December 8th? Yeah, seems so. Well, I think that's... The last class scheduled uh, in the attendance system is December 8th, and we don't have any makeups. December 8th? Probably mm -hmm. second week of, the, I think this is the 15th of September. Uh, sorry, December 15th, maybe the last one. But we don't have any makeups, and this week, which, is, which starts at December 12th, it is the week for makeups, but we don't have one. So when is your vacation started? Uh, officially, uh, on the 19th of December, we have uh, winter one semester. So the last uh, day of the semester is December 16. But as I said, like from December 12th, we have the makeup week. Uh, I can show you the it's on this application where it is written that we have the last class on December 8. Oh, so then December 8 is a day for final exam? I, I'm asking you because like uh, the only no, thing no, I no, see no, is the, is uh, the I, last I understood class. that. I understood that the, the, uh, December 15 is the uh, last one, last class. So I thought uh, December 15 is the day for the final. So that's my th that's my understanding. So uh, we are gonna have a class uh, on uh, yes December thirteen. Uh, so December eight and December thirteen, probably um, yeah we are gonna have uh, the review classes. But we don't have class on December thirteen. W what? We right. don't have class on December 13. You guys don't have any classes on December 13? Uh, like, uh, can I, uh, I will send you a screenshot in, in email right now of our attendance system where we have all the classes scheduled till the end of the semester. And you will see the, la the last class there, what, what we have right now on second. Then we have only so if you are right, then we have only one, including today one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So what about uh, what what do we uh, I'm I'm okay have uh, uh, having a makeup class on December 13. Even if you guys don't have any classes, well, why not? But we, do, we don't have, uh, we cannot have makeup class because we d d didn't lose any classes. We just, we have all the classes that were scheduled so we cannot have a makeup class. Okay, so then you want to, uh, so, okay, so what about this? Uh, Okay, so I'm gonna let you know when uh, I think it, yeah, I'm gonna let you know after this class, okay? Okay, that's a good question. Okay, I see. So you are saying that, okay, so uh, December 8th is the, supposed to be the last class, right? Yes. Okay. Okay, I will let you know, guys, uh, about the, uh, any yeah make a class date day for the make a class. Okay, I see. Thank you. <clears throat> um,
Okay. Today we are going to talk about dividends. And before we go to dividends, nice picture. Uh, we're going to review the previous lecture and then move on to dividends. Mm. Yeah, so in the previous lecture, uh, we uh, our focus was on the uh, MM uh, proposition, right? Mm. The second position, if we have, uh, in reality, we have taxes, right? So if we borrow that, if we use uh, debt capital, because interest expenses are tax deductible, it is beneficial for the company, right? Uh, which uses uh, that. So theoretically, the more we have that, um, the higher uh, tax savings uh, the company may have theoretically. Right, but um, in the MM theory, if we just have uh, that uh, tax benefits, so keep borrowing money, then at the end of the day, in reality, the, co the company had uh, uh, run the risk of uh, um, being uh, bankrupt, right? If you have too much debt, then what if the company could not service the interest payments because the, the business cycle is now, <clears throat> business cycle is in the uh, recession, right? So com most companies have, have uh, have their uh, not just have their own uh, systemic risk, but also systemic risk, right? So systemic risk, uh, if, if, if the, the global economy is in the, uh, the recession, then the company may not be able to service to that. So then the company could, uh, so if the company has a lot of debt, then the company has a really high risk of a bankruptcy. So uh, we should not, we should think the, the company should think of the bankruptcy cost. Okay, bankruptcy is is the the status where the status where the company could not is not able to pay its interest or uh, it's the principal amount of the borrowed money, right? And um, so uh, the company may uh, fire. The uh, the fire uh, the uh, the fire uh, uh, the, the the there's a bankruptcy court in the U.S. and Korea as well, so uh, they're gonna fire uh, bankruptcy with a court. So uh, through the bankruptcy process, uh, the company is going to uh, have some negotiations with the creditors. So uh, based on the negotiations, uh, the debt would be um that would be restructured uh sometimes it could be turned into equity swapped into equity something like that so anyway a bankruptcy is kind of a is the process of freeing a company of its debt and other obligations while giving creditors an opportunity for repayment so through the bankruptcy process um the creditors and the company try to come up with some uh, kind of optimal solution <clears throat> that uh, make uh, both parties happy. Happy, and maybe, uh, yeah, satisfied. Uh, uh, yeah, in terms of uh, um, uh, financial, um, yeah, financially, uh, uh, yeah. But basically, bankruptcy court uh, decide the uh, decide uh, uh, the whole uh, process. So anyway, so 
So bankruptcy cost is really um, should be taken account when it comes to um, capital uh, structure. When we have, uh, even if we have uh, tax be tax benefits from the uh, borrowing, okay. So uh, this is the bankruptcy cost, the direct cost, indirect cost. Anyway, so you, you guys lead on this part. So then, uh, what is going to be the optimal capital structure, right? So it is not. Uh, so one benefit is the tax, tax trade benefit, right? If you borrow money, but uh, but catch it. The, the catch is that uh, oh, bankruptcy risk, right? Bankruptcy cost. So this is kind of a trade-off between um, tax savings benefits and uh, bankruptcy cost. So if you find uh, the optimal point to where uh, these two cost and benefits equals the equals it, it, uh, the cost and debt and the tax savings benefit is the same, then uh, that would be the optimal point, optimal um, yeah capital structure. Theoretically, um, so we are not going into how to calculate the point, but uh, we just uh, through this graph. If you um, look at this graph, uh, axis is it uh, that? So if you go to the uh, right side, you have more that, right? And uh, y axis is the value of the bond. Uh, without considering bankruptcy cost, uh, the more you have uh, uh, that, then the value of the company will increase proportionally to the amount of debt because of this tax benefit, right? This is the value of the company uh, which borrowed the money, leveled the, leveled the value of the company. L means lever, leverage. The value of the revenue company equals to um, value of unlevered, unlevered, un, U is unlevered, unlevered company. Unlevered company is the company with, which does not have any uh, debt, okay? So only equity. So if you borrow money, then this is tax benefits that multiplied by tax rate. So this is the tax benefit, right? So without considering bankruptcy cost, the value of the lab, the company will increase proportionally to the, to the amount of, uh, to this uh, tax benefits, okay, like this. But because of these, um, the, the, the bankruptcy costs, bankruptcy costs here is called the financial distress cost. Financial distress costs uh, includes uh, this uh, direct bankruptcy cost and indirect bankruptcy costs, okay? So this financial distress is actually re reduces this, uh, uh, actually offset uh, part of uh, some uh, tax benefits from the uh, borrowed money. So actual rate of increase in value of the level of the company looks like this, right? So at some point, it, 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 from this point, the more you have, uh, the company has that, uh, the less the company's value it becomes, right? Okay, so yeah, so you just need to read this uh, graph uh, based on this uh, theoretical, um, yeah, uh, based on these theories. So, so this is reality, right? 
Yeah. The original uh, MM position, the, uh, the assumption was no friction in the market, including no bankruptcy cost, no taxes, right? So that's why uh, under MM position one, uh, regardless of the capital structure, the value of a level of form and a level of form is the same, right? But in reality, we have a bankruptcy cost and tax uh, taxes. Uh, so considering these two uh, factors, the optimal capital structure is, uh, yeah, to find out uh, optimal point to where the bankruptcy cost is the same as the tax benefits, right? Okay. Let's take on this question. MM's position assume perfect financial markets with no distorting taxes or other imperfections. Is it true or false? True. True. Yeah. MM supposition one says that corporate borrowing increases earnings per share or reduces price earnings ratio. No, value of the firm is independent from its capital structure. Mm. Yeah, so. Um, what you said is about MM position one, right? Uh, but we have uh, another position, MM two, MM position two. If you look at the MM position two, um, as the company borrows, uh, if the under the MM MM two. Okay. Um. The second proposition says that uh, the more we take in debt, mm -hmm. uh, the higher is the uh, require, required return and cost of equity. So, uh, let me plan, let me explain. Let's let's. Uh, this is the uh, original com company value. Okay, uh, on the level, it's only equity, right? Uh, but if the company borrows money, then level the level the value, uh, the value uh, and the, the the capital structure would be partly equity, partly debt. Okay, so this is the value of level the company. This is the value of unleveled company. Mm -hmm. So if we finance, uh, if the, the company uh, finance uh, part of the capital through debt, then equity capital will be reduced by the amount of that capital, right? So then number of shares will be reduced compared to the, uh, the number of shares of unleveled company, right? So as you have more debt, then equity capital will be reduced by the amount of debt. Then, uh, but regardless of this capital structure, you're right, the earnings will be the same, right? But number of shares will be reduced because a part of the equity capital was now replaced by the debt capital. So, so, uh, if a company borrows money instead of uh, equity capital, then uh, the earnings per share, earnings per share could increase because the earnings is the same as before, but number of shares reduced because part, part of the capital is uh, raised by that okay so 
earnings per share. Uh, Professor? Yeah. Uh, can you clarify what is earnings um, price earnings ratio? Okay. Earnings per share is basically calculated by total earnings divided by number of shares. Okay. That's the earnings per share. And price earning ratio? Price to earnings is uh, simply price divided by earnings per share. Price on the share, right? Yeah. Price okay. divided by earnings per share. So earnings per share could increase if the uh, corporate company borrows money. And when it comes to price earnings, as you know, the, even if the company changes the capital structure, the share price does not change, right? But since the earnings per share increased, uh, price the same, price to earnings ratio would decrease. But the problem is that this is about MM2 rather than MM1. MM1 was uh, uh, what the Yana just said that what Yana said uh, the the value of the bomb uh, level the uh, the value of the bomb is not does not change regardless of the capital structure. So that is the MM one, but uh, this one uh, comes from MM two. Okay, basically. Uh, before this, uh, the last is the the rest is actually true, but because of this one, uh, this is not true. So, okay, uh, this is not this is false, but this part is true. Okay, MS position two says that the cost of equity increases with the borrowing. And that the increase is proportional to that to value the ratio of the ratio of debt to form value. Is it true or worse? I think um, yeah, cost of equity increases with the borrowing. And the increase is proportional to that, that to equity, right? That to equity rather than that to bond value. I think this is more accurate, right? As you know, um, here, if the company borrows money, earnings per share increases, right? But at the same time, the cost of equity also increases as uh, with the borrowing. Earnings per share increase and cost of equity increases. So this is two increases cancel each other cancel each other because you know the price of the price of the uh, value of the product value of the stock basically earnings let's say earnings per share is cash flow right and uh, this cash flow is supposed to be discounted by uh, cost of equity so when cost so when cost of equity is same, does not change constant. And uh, if only earnings per share increases, then price will increase. But as the company borrows the money, bar as the company borrow uh, increases borrowing, cost of equity also increases. So at the end of the day, price does not share, does not increase because of these two offset each other, okay? 
you guys remember um, the Okay. This is that and that interest rate. Cost of equity. Uh, non interest rate double weight average cost of capital. Yeah. This is the cost of equity. You may remember this, this chart. So as the company borrows more money, cost of equity increases. Okay. So earnings per share also increases. Earnings per share also increases as the uh, company has more debt. So. Uh, earnings per share and the cost of equity both increases, right? So prices does not change theoretically. Okay. Understand? Why? What do you may you may ask yourself why equity cost of equity increases with more borrowing? Why? Because. Uh, Shareholder, uh, the uh, the creditors, right? Creditors has um, if you look at the balance sheet, if you look at the balance sheet, this is debt, and this is equity. Why do you think? Why why not like this equity? And debt. Why not? This asset. Why not? <laughs> looks like this, but looks this. Looks like this. Debt has uh, uh, creditors has a higher position than the equity holders, right? So as as so. As the debt increases, the equity, the shareholders' the position is getting uh, less, less safe, uh, getting less safe. Uh, their position is. Uh, because uh, once the company, as, as the company uh, running the business, the creditors' um, pressure is getting uh, much, uh, and much higher because, uh, yeah, they're, pressure on the uh, management is much, much higher than equity shareholders. And uh, once the company uh, goes into bankruptcy, equity shareholders, in most cases, have nothing to take away. So all the residual, prop, all the residual asset will be forced to use to pay off debt rather than equity holders. That's why the risk of equity is getting higher when the debt increases, okay? That's true. Let's let's take on D. MM's position two assumes the increased borrowing does not affect interest rate on firms that. Yeah, see, 
uh, under this position, interest rate does not change, it, it, even if the company has uh, uh, regardless of the amount of debt. Okay, that that is the assumption. It's true. Okay. Mm, any questions? No. Uh, you just need to, to uh, look at again uh, the MM positions, okay, to understand this because um, MM position one is simply uh, the value of uh, level to form and uh, level to form is the same. I mean, which means that regardless of the capital structure, the value of the form is the same as before. And MM two, uh, basically, as you have a more debt, the cost of equity is getting increased, okay? Cost of equity increases. That that that, that is the uh, yeah proportional to the uh, debt equity. That that is the MM two. Okay. Hmm. Pretty simple. Professor, so the D one is two. Yeah, increase the uh yeah uh, under the MMs uh the uh the, one of the MMs uh the position uh, position assumption is that. Uh, increased borrowing does not affect the interest rate on the on the on the form stack. So they assume that interest rate does not increase uh, uh, does not increase the, um, yeah even if the borrowing amount increase borrowing amount yeah is getting larger and larger. Yeah, that's their assumption. Okay. If but in the reality, interest rate is getting higher, right? So the company are on the risk of a bankruptcy as the interest rate is getting higher when the borrowing amount yeah, is getting larger. So it depends uh, sometimes, um, but in most cases, right? So, but th this is their assumption. Bird Enterprise has no debt. Its current total value is 47 million. Ignoring tax, what will the company's value be if it sells $18.4 million in debt? Company's value. So company's value currently only no debt, no debt. The only equity, 47 million, right? Now, then the change is they want to issue 18.4 million debt, right? So that 18.4 million debt. Um, equally amount probably assume the same, right? So then this is not uh, not about the changing uh, the capital structure. This is uh, uh, about uh, raising more capital, right? So company's value has increased by this amount of additional debt capital, right? So this is gonna be uh, this one plus what well, eighteen point four million is going to be company's value? Okay, if you add these two, this is not about capital structure changes in capital structure. This is about uh, raising more capital, right? Uh, what uh, equation did we use for this? So, like, if it has total value forty seven, why don't we subtract eighteen point four from forty seven? And like, yeah, uh, you could say that, but there, this, this is all we have, right? Well, if, I don't, yeah, if, if uh, 47 million, if a part of the uh, if equity, right, 
uh, this 18.4 million replaces uh, uh, the part of the equity, right? So then the equity value should be 47 minus 18.4, right? So then company value should be the same as 47, right? Uh, but there's no comment about this. I think this question is not very, uh, it's not complete. Right. So yeah. So you, you're right. If, if part of the uh, the debt it, it is uh, replaced, uh, uh, replaces uh, the, uh, uh, the if debt replaces the equity, then company value is the same. So if this question is about changes in capital structure, right? Capital structure initially it was one hundred percent equity, right? 47 million and the capital structure changed partly 47 million minus seven, 18.4 million equity and 18.4 million debt. So then this is uh, uh, from this one, equal, total uh, entire, uh, the capital structure was only equity, but now the cap structure change is from partly equity, partly debt. If that is the case, then there's no change in the value of a company. There's no change in company value, right? But if this is not about this change in capital structure, if this is just about add additional capital, then company value may increase by this additional capital. That's what I'm saying. Understand? Okay, so the question is not very good, but here, you, if you look at this question, suppose that now, suppose now that the company's tax rate 23%, assume that proceeds are used to repurchase equity. Then it's a little bit clear, right? Oh, okay, so then there's a changes in capital structure, right? So then what will is overall value if it sells 18.4 million in that? So before unlevel the value, before the uh, issuing that, it was 47 million, right? Then now you are going to lever, uh, you are going to have a leverage. So because we are considering tax, right? Tax, then company value is unlevered value plus that multiplied by tax rate, right? So additional value is 23% or to provide 18.4 million, right? Right? You guys remember, what's this? You guys remember? This is basically if uh, tax interest because this is because the interest expense is tax tax uh, deductible. So that amount multiplied by tax rate. I'm uh, sorry. That amount multiplied by not tax. interest rate and multiply by interest rate, let's say called, let's call R and multiply by tax. This is going to be, yeah, tax should, 
amount, right? But if you want to know the, if, 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 because the company is going, it, it, it is going to keep paying interest, right? So uh, the uh, terminal value of this uh, tax uh, should should be divided by interest rate. Then you have the terminal value of this tax shirt. So these two erased, then you have only that multiplied by tax rate. That's, this is the. So if you consider a tax benefit, tax shirt, then it is more, it is beneficial to use that rather than only equally because of this tax shirt. But we just, uh, as we just talked about, as we just talked, because of bankruptcy cost, this T is not always uh, uh, simply added to the value of the company. At some point, uh, bankruptcy costs will um, diminish these tax benefits, okay? So that's why we talked about uh, the optimal capital structure, okay? Any question? Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Just a minute. We have. Uh, uh, do you have to take this question? Wow. So only uh, thirty minutes passed. So, uh, please take on this question for you guys, for yourself, and this one as well. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna give you answers to these questions, or maybe um, if you have time, that we will uh, come back to these questions. So, uh, okay. A dividend is it's a little bit easy. Okay, uh, relatively relatively easy. So let's move on to dividends. So dividends, uh, repurchases, and then stock, yeah, stock repurchases, and the dividend policy and stock price. So we, we are going to talk about dividends. <clears throat> um, this is from the Wall Street Journal. We have uh, three, about four slides. So I strongly recommend uh, this article I recommend that you guys read this article because if you once you uh, finish with this article then you may have a better understanding good understanding of uh, um, the relationship uh, between uh, dividends and the stock price okay so uh, not that difficult uh, not that difficult pretty uh, yeah e easily readable so please read this article. I strongly recommend this article. Okay. Dividends, dividend distribution. So you, you guys know dividend, yeah? Uh, the, when the company makes profits, then the part of the profits is paid out to the uh, shareholders, right? If not, then they want to use the uh, the uh, earnings uh, for new investment. Supposed to uh, uh, supposed to use that uh, earnings for new investment to generate uh, more profits uh, for the shareholders, right? So payments made out of the firm's earnings to owners in the form of either cash or stock, yeah. 
um, the regular cash dividend. So when you when you when you think about dividend, we usually we usually means the cash dividend. So usually quarterly, uh, quarterly or annually um, from retained earnings. Okay, so a sign of financial stability. So um, financial stability. So if the company is a, is is, is keep growing, which means that they need a, a lot of money for uh, investment, the growing company usually do not pay uh, dividends a lot uh, because they need more cash. Uh, than uh, a distribution. So the dividend paying companies are usually uh, pretty mature companies, uh, usually. So, or they are in a very um, non cyclical uh, industry, like a food industry or energy industry, uh, food industry. Yeah, food industry or some uh, disaster industries. A liquidating dividend. Liquidating dividends is a you pay uh, dividends more than retained earnings. Okay, so you are supposed to pay dividends out of earnings. So, but but if you pay dividends uh, uh, more than uh, earnings usually from um, paid in capital, then that is liquidating dividends. Liquidating dividends is, uh, uh, yeah, it's kind of, the dividends is kind of uh, uh, liquidating the company because they return uh, part of the original capital to the shareholders, okay? Uh, this EMP is, is on its property is the tax terms, so, you guys need to ignore stock dividend. Stock dividend is a dividend paid out in new shares of stock rather than cash. Okay, stock dividend. So you receive a stock, new stock rather than cash as a, a, a dividend. Okay, that's a stock dividend. Stock split is the same as stock dividend, just in ratio. You split one shares into three, four, five, right? Uh, this usually happens when the stock price is very high and the you know, trading volume is not quite high. So, well, one way to boost the stock price, uh, uh, one way to yeah boost the the uh, the, uh, the 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 the, the liquidity of the stock, they uh, split the stock. Or the uh, price is too, uh, uh, the price of stock is too high, uh, then yeah, yeah, the trading is not very active. So then the company decided to split the stock. So, you know, the, the Tesla and some high flying companies uh, split this, their stock, okay. In the past, share repurchase is uh, you, the company, the company repurchase the stocks from the shareholders in return for uh, paying cash. Okay, so um, you reduce the number of shares in the uh, reduce the number of shares, and yeah. Uh, the, the difference be, uh, from the cash dividend is that cash dividend is, is you simply uh, distribute cash, right? But share repurchase is uh, uh, not only uh, paying cash to uh, in return for the shares, of the number of shares was reduced because uh, shares are repurchased by the company. Okay. You guys, uh, do you guys, uh, uh, Treasury, do you guys uh, have understanding of treasury stock? Treasury stock is the, the shares repurchased by the company, right? If you guys took the, 
uh, intermediate accounting, you may remember the treasury stock. So share repurchase, so shares repurchased from the uh, shareholders is called the treasury stock, okay? Anyway, that, that's accounting terminology. So we have these types of share dividend, uh, sorry, uh, dividends, okay? Uh, one thing you guys need to know is X dividend day. X dividend day. Uh, X dividend day is the day, uh, day uh, um, after which, uh, if, if you purchase the uh, stock on or after X dividend day, then you are not entitled to um, any dividend distribution. So we are now in 2021, right? So probably X dividend day is around uh, December, uh, uh, one day in December. So let's say the company decide, the company uh, de uh, de decided, uh, determined that the X dividend day December uh, 18, right? So December 18 is X dividend day. So if you purchase the stock on a December 18 or after December 18, you are not supposed to receive dividends uh, for the uh, for the year 2021. Yeah. But only after 20, probably 2022, if you keep holding the stock. So as you can see here, a share of a stock goes X dividends on the day. The seller is entitled to keep the dividend. So buyer of the shares on on, on or after X dividend day is not entitled to stop uh, any dividend distribution from the company, okay? That is X dividend day. So X dividend day is very important. So uh, from the X dividend day, uh, the stock prices is affected by the dividend because the, yeah, if you purchase the on, 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 on or after X dividend day, uh, you are not to receive a dividend. So stock prices decreases on after X dividend day. Especially on, yeah, on, on X dividend day, stock prices decreases. Yeah, because you are not, if you purchase the stock, you are not uh, entitled to the dividend distribution in the current year. Uh, one, two, three, four. You guys read uh, this explanation, but this X dividend day is most important. In the US, uh, X dividend day is two days. Um, yeah, shares are traded X dividend on and after second business day before record day. So here, record day. Record day is the day. Uh, uh, record day is officially uh, they uh, they confirm uh, which shareholders are going to receive a dividend. So. After two days later, in two days, two days, uh, uh, two days uh, after X dividend day, record days, we, uh, it is, uh, yeah, is, yeah, is set, and then the old official, uh, the shareholders will be decided to uh, the shareholders to receive uh, dividends uh, will be the list of shareholders to receive dividend will be decided on record day. So X dividend day is usually two days before uh, record day. So here, at 28th, January, or Friday, yes. So, uh, not December, yeah, probably January, because financial statement should be, yeah, have not been determined until December 31st, 30, right? So this is not realistic. So January or February, or March next year. Yeah, this is pretty uh, straightforward. 
X dividend day, the stock price is uh, goes down by the amount of dividend. So stock price will fall by the amount of the dividend on the day on the X, X, X day. If the dividend is the one dollar per share, the price will be equal. If the uh, uh, original price was ten, then it's going to be uh, nine dollars deducting one dollars of dividend. Okay. So this one dollar goes to seller of the shares. Okay. This is easy. Mm. Stock repurchases, stock buybacks. Um, Company buys its own outstanding shares to reduce number of shares in the stock market. So, yeah, sometimes they uh, uh, boost the uh, stock prices. They sometimes uh, purchase their own stocks in the stock market. So then what's the impact of those uh, stock repurchase? First one is earnings per share increase. Why? Because number of shares reduced when the stock price is same, right? So number of shares reduced. Then, so earnings per share increased, and the price to earnings, price to earnings, usually decreases, usually, because earnings per share increases, right? This is earnings per share. This is earning a price per share, price per share, and earnings per share. So if the price is same as before, as before the uh, stock purchases, uh, uh, the stock is same as after the uh, stock purchase, while uh, earnings per share increases, then price to earnings will decrease. But in most cases, in reality, stock prices also increasing. Yeah, in most cases, that's is a little bit abnormal. Uh, that's that's a little bit abnormal. But theoretically, price earnings is supposed to be uh, supposed to be uh, supposed to decrease. But in reality, uh, when the company uh, repurchases their own shares, then the company take it as a good signal. So the company, the price of shares could increase. Yeah. Demonstrate to investors, the business has sufficient cash or not have other profitable opportunity for growth. Yeah, either one, uh, sufficient cash. So they have a lot of cashes. So, they are very profitable. So it depends on the on company. Sometimes they uh, take the reserve purchase as a very good sign uh, because they are performing very well. But the other one, in the other way, uh, where the company did not a lot of, uh, need that money because uh, needed that much, there's not much, um, they don't have any, any uh, business opportunities uh, to, uh, yeah, to generate return from the use of the money. So that's why uh, they distribute the cashes to the uh, shareholders. So if they uh, shareholders uh, take uh, uh, the share purchase like that, then the share price may go down. So it depends, so yeah. Oh. Can you explain again the second uh, bullet point about price to earnings? I didn't get why we have price going up and so ratio decreases. Okay. Um, here. This is if, okay? If, if. So earnings per share is definitely increasing, increases. This is not if. Because uh, if 
when the company, if the company uh, repurchases shares, the number of shares reduced, while earnings is the same. So this is not if, so earnings per share increases. Um, when it comes to share price, sometimes, uh, uh, as, as, as the company announced the, the share repurchases, sometimes the share price increases, sometimes the share price decreases, or sometimes the share price does not change. Yeah. It depends. Um, as, it, as you can see here, business has sufficient cash. So sufficient cash means that, oh, they performing very well, right? So if they take the share purchase as a good sign, then share price may go up, okay? So if the share price go, prices go up and the earnings per share go up, then price to earnings may be not much changes, okay? But if the price is the same as before, and then the share uh, stock uh, repurchase may have an impact on, so, I mean, the share repurchase, the only, only for share, will reduce as a, as a result of a stock repurchase because the earnings per share increase when the stock prices does not change. So price to earnings will decrease. And if the price increases, uh, decreases, mostly not, uh, stock price decreases. But if a stock price decreases, then yeah, earnings per share, will goes down deeply, yeah. So, yeah, so um, it depends. It depends. That's why we say if. But in most cases, uh, share repurchase uh, could mean, could uh, give a very good signal to the investors. So stock price could rise. So in terms of uh, uh, price to earnings, uh, there may not be much, uh, price to earnings, there may not be much changes when the stock uh, is repurchased. Okay. Um, yeah, so if you have time, uh, so opposite the increase in outstanding shares from exercise employees to so, yeah, you know, the stock options, right? Stock options is the um, not yet. Stock options is the, uh, the right uh, that uh, the employees has, uh, uh, employees has to exercise if the stock price is uh, higher than the exercise price, okay? So if the employees uh, are having stock, stock options uh, actually exercise the options, then the company should issue new shares. Then number of shares will increase, right? So then additional number of shares will have an impact on the share price. So to the company, sometimes uh, repurchase additional shares as a result of the exercise of options by employees. Yeah. To uh, to reduce uh, to reduce the number of shares in the market. Okay.
tax proposal is considered the capital gains rather than dividend income. Yes, the capital gains usually has a lower tax rate than the dividend income. Dividend income usually, if you're individual, if you're individual, individual, if you're individual, not company, company, um, companies, if you are shareholder is a company, then there's not much difference in terms of capital gains and dividend income. But if you're individual, then there is a difference in tax return between capital gains and dividend. So capital gain is more has more favorable tax treatment than dividend income. So that's why uh, individuals uh, prefer the capital uh, cap, uh, the, the share reporting. So one of the reasons for uh, the increases in price after share repurchases may come from this tax benefit. Okay. So investors may take the uh, share purchase as a good signal. One of the reasons is the tax because the capital gains, you know, the share, share repurchase, the any, okay, Share repurchase means that it's, it's kind of a transaction between the stockholder and the company, right? So the stockholders actually sell the, their shares to the company, right? So then the stockholder may have uh, gains. Then that gain, that, that gain is considered capital gain. But if the shareholder simply uh, receive the dividends in cash, then that dividend is simply uh, is dividend is considered uh, uh, ordinary income like uh, wages or salary. So these wages salaries are subject to higher tax rate than the capital gains rate tax rate. That's why uh, some individuals, many individuals, yeah, prefer. Uh, stock repurchase rather than cash dividends. You guys understand? Sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, wow, just a minute. Okay, I I'm gonna explain this one uh, again, tax. Did, did you guys take uh, intermediate accounting? No, we take only the introduction and used to take financial accounting, but intermediate accounting is not mandatory. Okay. <laughs> well, dividends is, uh, okay, dividends is, uh, this section uh, needs a little bit of understanding on accounting. Um, okay, so share repurchase means that, okay, this is company, Right, and uh, shareholder, shareholder. So shareholder is the owner of this company, right? They invested the capital, they injected the capital and return for this capital, the company issued the stock, issued the shares, right? And the company is running uh, the, their business using this capital, right? So the business is good, right? So they make a lot of money, right? So at some point, uh, 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 at some point, uh, uh, a specific year, or let's say 2021, uh, 2020, uh, 2021, company decided to distribute a uh, part of their uh, profits to the shareholders. That is dividend, right? So if the company, this is the asset and this is that, and this is equity. So the company decided part of the equity, part of the earnings to be distributed, uh, to be, uh, they decided to uh, distribute a part of this earnings, right? Part of this earning distributed to shareholders, the so cash, 
right? This is cash dividends. Okay. Then this cash dividends is considered uh, it considered the same as uh, uh, wages or or salary or yeah. So this is subject a higher tax rate. You know, um, in, 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 in the US from zero to 37%. Highest tax rate uh, in, uh, in the US, uh, individual tax, highest individual tax is 37%. Okay, so this is the case when uh, this is the tax treatment on this cash dividend. But share repurchase, stock repurchase means that, oh, company has some cashes, extra cashes, right? Because of good business. So they or they're gonna pay cash to shareholders. But unlike cash dividends, share repurchase means that shareholders return their shares, part of the shares, part of the shares they hold, they return part of or part of the shares they, they hold to the to the company. So this is transaction for uh, between company and shareholder. Shareholder receives cash and they return shares to the company. Okay. So then those shares in this, in this track session, the shareholders may have uh, their initial purchase price, right? Purchase price of the shares, right? Their initial purchase price of shares. Let's say 100. Now, because of the now, let's say the uh, the, the the repurchasing price, repurchase price, let's say 200, 150. So company pays 150, and you return your share, uh, part of your share that you purchased at 100. Right. So then you have gain 50. Okay. So this is capital gain. And this capital gain in the US is uh, can enjoy lower tax rate, sometimes 0%, sometimes 15%, sometimes 20%, maximum 20%. So that's why. Uh, the same, the similar in Korea. Um, if in, in Korea, if you uh, stop capital, capital gain, yeah, unless you are you know, a large shareholder, you are not, you don't have to pay tax anyway. Yeah, so capital gains could enjoy the, uh, the preferential tax rate. So that's why uh, they they prefer they may prefer stock purchases. Okay, now now you guys understand. Okay. Um, uh, this is going to take some time. Mm, let's move on to. Stock dividend and stock split. So you guys understand the stock dividend and stock split, right? Uh, stock dividends is uh, instead of a cash here, instead of a cash, you pay you uh, the company issue additional shares. Okay, that's the difference. That's the stock dividend. Stock split is one share 
becomes uh, two, uh, two, three, four, five, whatever, no, whatever, whatever numbers. The, 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 the one share could become more than one share, multiple shares. Right? That's a stock split. Okay. One of the reasons is to boost the stock liquidity. So if the stock liquidity is increased, then the stock price could be also could also rise. Uh, Can you explain again what, what is stock split? Okay. <laughs> I, I, stock... I have no accounting bank background, sorry. <laughs> no, 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 that's fine. Yeah, stock, for, let's say you have 100 shares, right? So then the company announced the stock split. Stock split of one for uh, or a three for one here, three for one. So we are gonna stock split in uh in the three for one. So which means that one one stock could become three. So now you currently have one hundred uh, shares, but after this announcement, uh, stock split uh, three or uh, three for one stock split. Uh, then your number of shares becomes 300. And how this influences the price of the share? So for example, my 100 stocks cost, uh, used to cost $100 and the new 300 stock, stocks will be $300 or $100 as they was? Yeah, so then uh, let's take, let's take on, um, yeah, let's take on this question. So the company with uh, common equity accounts, uh, um, okay, I'm gonna explain additional, I can give you additional explanation solving this question. Uh, I'm gonna uh, answer your question, solving this question, okay? The company with the common equity accounts shown here as uh, has, has declared a 10% stock. Uh, this is stock dividend, stock split. Uh, okay, you don't have stock split. Okay, so yeah, simply speaking, number of shares increases, right? So number of shares increases and uh, Total, there's no changes in equity. No changes in equity. Just let's say here. Hmm. This is a market value, market value. And the market value of equity is uh, $650,000, right? So uh, number of shares here, let's say 21,000. Right, so the number, the the the, the uh, uh, price per share, price per share is going to be six hundred fifty thousand divided by two hundred twenty one thousand dollars. This is going to be price per share, right? But if the stock Split into four, three, four, uh, three, 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 four, one, right? No, 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 three, four, one, two, four, one. So the number of shares is going to be 420,000. And total market value of the shares does not change after the stock split. So price is going to be divided by uh, prices, uh, price, price, per, uh, price, uh, price per share. So price per share, price per share is $65,000 uh, divided by 42,000 number of shares. That is the uh, uh, price, uh, price per share, price per share. Okay, so here, Stock split increases liquidity. 
liquidity. So number of shares increases, then uh, price per share decreases, right? But as time goes by, the price of the shares could increase because, uh, because of the liquidity. Because if you, let's say, before, uh, let's, for example, Amazon, Amazon uh, uh, just um, took up, right? Their business took up. So their share price, uh, uh, yeah, significantly increased, let's say uh, $200. So $200 per share is a little bit too much, right? So people's the many people may the people the investors may feel a little bit yeah intimidated by the, the by the price of these shares. So if they increase the number of shares, then price per share will really goes down, right? As I just explained here, right? Price per share will go down. So then, because there was liquidity, no more number of shares. They have a more, uh, they may they feel more comfortable with uh, trading this, uh, buying and selling these uh, shares. So as 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 time goes by, after the stock split, price could go up, could go up. So then earnings price, earnings per share, could be, uh, could be could would not decrease, but. Uh, could uh, may show uh, uh, slowly increases as time goes as time goes by. Understand? Can I understand? So, simply speaking, uh, the immediate effect of a stock split is. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, price, uh, price uh, in terms of stock price, um, stock price, the uh, price per share decreases because number of shares increases. While the stock uh, price, uh, price on uh, the, the 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 total earning total uh, the total market value of the company. Equally market value of the company because equally market value of the company is the same before and after stock split. Market value of the company does not change because of the stock split. That's why uh, the increased, num the increased uh, number of shares of uh, the increased number of shares decreases uh, uh, price per shares. Okay. Um, I think uh, this one's a little bit important. So I'm gonna start uh, from uh, this question uh, in the next, uh, yeah. So you are basically you are saying that um, December eight is the should, supposed to be last last day for this class for this uh, for this uh, the last class. That's that's what you are saying, right? Yes, because we started early, like uh, in August. So this week from four till eight till nine uh, is going to be like the last week uh, of the Is it possible semester. to have a makeup class on uh, December 9th? Uh, we cannot have a makeup class because we don't have any classes that uh, were lost due to holidays or something like this. So we were like precisely on schedule that's why we will ha we'll have like on the eighth the last last 
Um, yeah, uh, but we have only one, two, three, four. We have only four because December A is the day for final, right? Yes. Okay. Um, so then uh, next class about dividend and uh, uh, working capital and uh, the other uh, and the plus one uh, yeah foreign exchange and then the last two uh, review okay okay so if you guys have any question, please email me uh, so that I'll give you more explanation. Okay, thank you. Uh, see you this Thursday. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank, thank you, Professor. You. Thank you, Professor. Thank you, Professor. Bye. Bye. bye.